Hello everyone and welcome to the official Project Nublar cloning guide. This video will be split up into four sections, each about the four machines. For each section I'll explain how the machine is built, used and upgraded along with any further information. Time codes can be found in the description for everything. The first machine we're going to look at is the fossil processor. To build the fossil processor, you first put on the base, the body, the lid and the tanks. Note that the tanks and the lid can be placed down the opposite way. To begin using the fossil processor, you first need a fossil. These fossils can currently be found in stone, sandstone and terracotta. Once you have a fossil, in this example I am going to be using the Tyrannosaurus, you then place the fossil into the fossil processor along with an empty test tube, a water bucket and a filter. The different tiers of filters will give you a different efficiency and therefore will give you more genetic data in your result. Uh, as the machine uses the filter, the filter wears down and, and gives less efficiency. So this machine is now done and it's giving us some genetic material that has two genetic data. Uh, I'll now show you what a diamond filter looks like. So with the diamond filter, this has given us some genetic material with five genetic data. Also note that the water level here is going down as the machine is being used. This machine also comes with some upgrades. The tank upgrade, which changes the look of the uh, model, gives us a bigger space to fill water, as you can see. By default, the tank can store two buckets with the first upgrade, it can store three buckets, and with the diamond upgrade, it can store four buckets. Currently, the machine takes four minutes to do the process. With the iron computer chip upgrade, it takes three minutes. With the gold, it takes two minutes. And with the diamond, it takes one minute. Once we have our genetic data, we can go ahead and build the sequencer. To do that, we place the sequencer base, the door, the computer, and the monitor. The order between the door and the computer doesn't matter. I can place whichever one first, but uh, the monitor does have to come after the computer. By right clicking the machine with a die, you are able to change the color of the computer. Once built, you need to insert a storage device into the machine. Currently, there are two types of storage devices, hard drives and SSDs. Uh, the only difference is the time it takes to sequence. So for hard drives, it takes 10 seconds for a sequence to happen. And for SSDs, it takes five. So once sequenced, you'll see that uh, I, I, I've spawned a bunch of genetic material in and let it run. So now I have 100% of a dinosaur of the T-Rex uh, and I can click on it and it will show a little preview along with some currently <laughs> incorrect information. While sequencing, the amount of genetic data in your item is the percentage that gets added on. Once you want to begin editing your dinosaur, head over to the Edit tab. Here, you can select the different animals you want uh, for when you synthesize your dinosaur. The top one, you select the base dinosaur. So for this, I, it will be Tyrannosaurus, and you need at least 50% of that dinosaur. To use other animals in your dinosaur, you first need to get their DNA. To do this, you can right click with an empty syringe on whatever mob you want. For example, I clicked on this bee and this is giving me ATB DNA. I also want DNA from this parrot, so I can right click on this parrot and I get 64. So I've started to sequence these items, so I can take the DNA fill syringe and put it in here and it will give me an empty syringe. So you can see, now I've got 80% bee DNA and the 64% parrot, the red parrot DNA. So I can head over back to the edit tab, select this, and start putting bee DNA into my dinosaur. As you can see, this changes the size of the dino because uh, obviously bees are small and it also changes its color. If I were to do 50% of the parrot DNA, it would do the same. The full list of colors and genes for each mob can be found in our genetics guide on our website which is linked in the description. In order to be able to sequence more slots here, you first need to increase the amount of percentage you have. So as you can see, I'm obviously I can't put the test tube in here because there's a syringe so I take the syringe out. So it's, we sequence more items. 
and we're getting more and more slots as the dinosaurs percentage goes up essentially so if i had more animals uh here i'd be able to add them so this could be here this could be here and add some more ones. obviously the total percentage has to reach uh a hundred percent so you can see i've reached a hundred percent for the t-rex and therefore i've unlocked all the slots each dinosaur comes with two different layers a primary layer and a secondary layer say i wanted the yellow on the primary layer i can click this and you can see it changes if i wanted it on the secondary layer i could click this and it changes by default you have the first color on the primary layer and the second color if it exists on the secondary layer so here you can see a b dinosaur or i can swap these colors around to give uh, a different type of b dinosaur i'm sure you've noticed that the amount of DNA you use the, gives uh, a different effect. The obviously the more DNA you use, the more of a color change. The less DNA, the less of a color change. For this example, I'm gonna have the uh, yellow on the primary layer and the brown on the secondary layer to give this uh, color of dinosaur. If you wanted to control the gender of your dinosaur, you can go to this advanced tab, and I'll speak more about it later and you can select the gender gene and you can switch it between only male, only female or random. Note that you need 80% of the dinosaur to be sequenced before you're able to edit the gender like this. Uh, before 80% it would be random. Once you've selected the dinosaur you want, you can go over to the synthesis tab, place in some water, some sugar, some bone matter this can be bone blocks bone meal and some plant matter you'll need a test tube an empty test tube there and then you can begin the process and this will take by default on 10 minutes so we're about halfway through and you can see the animation that slowly plays out as the synthesizing is done well this is now finished and we can get our our test tube uh, and if we press shift, it gives us a breakdown of the DNA. So it's a minus 50% size, uh, an extra 30% speed. It's got those two colors and it's a random gender. Now, if we go back to the uh, advanced editing screen, this here is a list of different chromosomes. And when you isolate a gene, you'll be able to directly control its value. To isolate a gene is simple. You just need to sequence every animal that has that gene to 100%. If we go to the isolated tab on the main page, we can see that to get the immunity, we need all of the pig and all of the turtle. Uh, I have 100% of the pig, but none of the turtle. The defense gene is all of these. The intelligence gene is all of these, etc. The exception to this is the color gene, which requires all of the tropical fish to be sequenced. Uh, this does not include black, which does not naturally spawn. So now that every single tropical fish is at 100%, I can go to isolated. This is at 100%. You can see this to isolate underwater capability. I need also all of these, which I haven't done. Uh, so if I go to edit, uh, I can set this to 100% now because I don't need to fill it in with other entities, which can give uh, other side effects you don't want. So you can see, as always, we have gender. But now I also have secondary color. This UI here isn't obviously not finished. Um, but you can see I can set the amount, I can set the lightness, set the color. So if I want to make like a purple dinosaur, I can do this. I see a very um very cool looking dinosaur. To isolate the immunity gene, you can see I need to uh, sequence the turtle. So I can do that. I have turtle DNA here. You can see um, as it goes. We get the turtle down here. And you can see eventually uh, it will show 100% completely sequenced, uh, completely isolated. So then I can go back into the advanced tab and you see we have a new gene. 
so I can set this immunity to be like well, whatever I want within these two ranges essentially. So now I have these two test tubes. The first one is the first one we did with the B DNA, and the second one is the fun one we did that is just purple dinosaur. So I, for the rest of the uh, video, I'll be using both of these so we can see the difference in the final outcome. So, like before, there are upgrades to the machine. Uh, the tank upgrade will change the amount that these water, sugar, bone matter, and plant tanks can hold. Uh, the first one will upgrade it to 150% of the original size. The gold tank is 200% of the original size. Diamond, 250. And never right is 300% of the original size. The computer chips upgrades can also be used to speed up the synthesizing part. By default, it's 10 minutes. With the iron, it is 7 minutes. And with the gold, it is 4 minutes. The next machine is the egg printer. To build this, we placed on the base, and then you can place on the needle, the platform, and the body in any order. To continue, we need an embryo filled syringe. To get this, you need to first make either a chicken or a parrot in their in love mode, and then right click with the empty syringe. Then, simply place in an embryo filled syringe and some bone meal into the egg printer, and it will begin. Unlike other machines, seen before this machine has an animation that plays out while it's running which you can see here so after the machine is done it gives us an artificial egg there is also a 10 percent chance that it gives a broken artificial egg which cannot be used this can be solved though in an upgrade called the leveling sensor by default uh, the egg printer will take 10 minutes to complete its process with the iron computer chip, it will take eight. With the gold, it takes six. And with the diamond upgrade, it will take four minutes. Once you've got your artificial egg and your test tubes, these are the two test tubes from before, you can combine them in a crafting inventory to get the unincubated egg. This, if you press shift, it should give you the same DNA breakdown as before. For the final machine, uh, the incubator, first you will need the base and the nest then the lid, then the lift, the arm base, and finally the arm. To begin using the incubator, we first need to put plant matter in, which will have this little animation. I can now place these unincubated eggs on the incubator. You see if I place these in opposite corners. On the actual bed, they appear in opposite corners. If I place the one in the middle, one above it, you can see it's it's done that, that there. I put this here, this here. You can see it changes. So the position when you put it on the in the GUI changes its position in the real life. So I can put these here and I can put these here. By default, you can only have three eggs on a bed at once. You can see I can place one more there, but I can't place any more. Every so often. While the process is going ahead, this arm will come in and just rotate the X. Once the process is done, we'll have these incubated eggs which we can collect. By default, an incubator can only have three eggs. With the small container upgrade, it can have six eggs. And with the large container upgrade, it can have nine eggs. So by default, an egg will take around 30 minutes to incubate, which is around 18 seconds per percentage. With the warm bulb upgrade, which you can see changes the color of the lamp slightly, it takes 25 minutes per egg, which is about 15 seconds per percentage. Uh, the warmer bulb changes it even darker, will take around 20 minutes per egg, which is 12 seconds per percentage. And finally the hot bulb upgrade, which changes the uh, bulb color further, uh, takes it down to 50 minutes per egg or about nine seconds per percentage. And finally, the amount of plant matter that can be stored in the incubator can be upgraded with the tank upgrades. By default, it's 100 plant matter, which is an arbitrary number. Um, with the iron tank, that goes up to 150 plant matter and the gold tank takes that to 200 plant matter. 
once we have our incubated eggs you can just spawn them into the world by right clicking uh, currently there is no AI enabled on the dinosaurs and that includes blinking or moving around or anything um, if we get a female version of this yeah you can see the BDNA uh, like coloring in both of the dinosaurs and then this dinosaur is the purple one so you can see this T-Rex has the purple DNA and is obviously a lot bigger because it doesn't have any of the B DNA than the other two dinosaurs do. Here is some other cloning done with different dinosaurs, colors, sizes, etc. The dinosaurs here are so tiny as they are 50% B. Thank you guys so much for watching this half showcase, half tutorial on how the genetic system will work. Uh, please note that this is subject to change, and although we don't expect to, some parts of it may change for the beta. Uh, for those who haven't seen, we've released a blog post about the current state of things and why it's taking so long to give updates, so if you haven't already seen that, it's linked in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you all soon in the future.